What determines fountain pen friendly paper? I realize it's relative, but are certain weights or smoothness better for less bleeding or feathering? This is a very, very common question. I'm sure I've answered it at some point, maybe a couple times in some capacity here on Q&A, but I'll be honest with you after however many thousand questions I've answered, uh, I just couldn't find it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and answer it again and I'm giving you some context of some certain notebooks. Um, you know, as Colin was helping me pick this question, he put a note in here like, hey, maybe you can give some tips about when you're shopping for a notebook at like a department store or a bookstore or something like that. Is there anything that you can look out for? And I was like, okay, that's a cool, it's kind of a different spin. I haven't really taken it down that road. So that's, that's the angle I'm gonna take to this question is, you know, if you're shopping, like even like physically, or just, you know, there's notebooks around at a lot of different places. How do you know if there's gonna be fountain pen friendly paper? Um, and the, lo the long and short of it uh, is that, you know, who, who determines or what determines fountain pen friendly paper? Um, like you do, <laughs> I do, <laughs> whoever's using the product. Um, there's no fountain pen paper police out there. There's no trade industry you know, designation or certification or anything like that that happens. Uh, so really it's the wild west in terms of who wants to say that their paper is fountain pen friendly or who amongst us users uh, determines whether or not something is crossed that threshold into being fountain pen friendly. Um, so I think in general, the terms that um, are used when talking about fountain pen friendly paper is you know, there's certainly a smoothness element. Typically, if you have a really textured paper, that's not necessarily, you know, considered to be fountain pen friendly, but it's a factor. Generally, it's smoother, but that's not necessarily a deal breaker for everyone. Um, I think the paper weight is usually um, a pretty good indicator. You know, the, the gram weight or the paper thickness in, in the US, you have pound weight paper, like when you're buying inkjet paper, 20 pound, 24 pound, 28, 32. Um, that uh, roughly can be equated to the gram weight. Um, technically it's grams per square meter, GSM or GM or GM2 or, you know, with a little squared two or something like that. Um, and what that means, that designation, the, the grams per square meter, it's literally if there was one sheet of paper um, and you cut it into one square meter, how much does that paper actually weigh? So if you have 80 grams per square meter, if you have one sheet of that paper in one square meter, it's gonna weigh 80 grams. If you have one that's 90 grams, that's how much it's gonna weigh, it's 90 grams. So you can pretty much deduce that a 90 gram weight paper is going to be thicker because it's the same dimension in the weight measurement. It's just thicker paper. That's the only, you know, it's, it's the only way you can go is if the, if the size, the, the height, it's the, it's the the length and width are the same. The height's the only thing that can change the height, that thickness of paper. Um, it's not necessarily the only factor because there's other things like coatings and, and different pulp and density and stuff like that of the paper. So even the gram paper weight of paper doesn't necessarily mean that that's the thickness. And that's one, one thing that um, trips some people up as you think, oh, 90 gram paper, that's gonna be thicker than 80 gram paper probably but not necessarily, even still. Um, you know, that's, that's usually the only actual designation that you get on a notebook that can be somewhat objective. Um, pretty much everything else is gonna be very subjective. You know, the things that matter when you're really looking for fountain pen friendliness is, is it gonna be ink resistant? Like, is it, gonna, is it gonna allow the ink to dry on the page as opposed to soaking in and spreading out? You know, feathering is when it's like, gets this kind of like caterpillar kind of effect where it like has these little offshoots. When you have really absorbent paper, that can happen. The spread is like when it like just kind of goes out from the line, you know, you have a fine nib and it looks like it's like a highlighter, you know, it just kind of spreads out like crazy and looks really fuzzy and flat looking. Um, that's not a really quality that you desire. So having a very ink resistant paper, it's heavily coated. So the ink really sits on top. It stays true to the line that you're putting down. So if you have a fine nib, it's going to write a fine line. If you have a broad nib, it's going to write a broad line, maybe pull up on the page. Um, and it's not going to bleed through on the back. Bleed through is another term that, that a lot of people are looking. So, um, 
you know, fountain pen friendly paper is not going to bleed through to the back. So if you write on one side of the page and you flip it over, you're not seeing what you wrote coming through on the other side. So you can actually write on both sides of the page. Um, another term is called ghosting, and that's when you can, maybe it hasn't bled all the way through, but you can see, you know, kind of, uh, it's almost like a sheer, like a translucent kind of effect you get when you write on one side of the page and you flip it over and you can see, and it kind of competes with, um, that's called ghosting or show through or echoing or something like that. So, um, sometimes if you're, if you have a paper brand that has more of like a premium quality to it, Premium, premium is sometimes a term that's used though that could mean anything. A lot of times premium is something you could just slap on just to make it more expensive. So you gotta, it's a, bit, a little bit of deduction you have to make there depending on what notebook you're looking at. Um, I grabbed a bunch of different notebooks um, that I have just kind of on my notebook shelf over here just to see like, you know, is there any consistency at all, at least with some of the notebooks that I've grabbed towards what's actually on the packaging and marketing materials and how good a paper quality it actually is. So looking at a brand like Claire Fontaine, for example, which is for me kind of the gold standard for fountain pen friendly paper. Um, you know, it has the sheet count, it has the 90 gram, it says G slash M2 grams per square meter. Uh, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't really say anything else. It's got the dimensions, um, but it doesn't say anything fountain pen friendly. Make, you know, it says PEFC, which is the you know sustainability certified kind of thing. But it doesn't say it doesn't say anything about like being better for fountain pens. Um, and I have a couple different notebooks, both of them green apparently. Um, and it doesn't really say made in France. You know, it doesn't say. It's, it's, it's not marketed as fountain pen friendly, which is you know that right there is like well dang that's like the standard of paper that people know. You know, Rodi is kind of the same boat. Uh, Rodi and Claire Fontaine are in like the same uh, family. Uh, theirs, they say, you know, 80 sheets, you know, high grade vellum paper is what Rodia says. Um, that's pretty much the only designation that it says in terms of like being like a premium quality kind of thing, uh, aside from just typical stuff like measurements and all that kind of stuff. So uh, vellum is, is another term that's like, that's, that's kind of used as a, as a term for high grade paper. Uh, real vellum is usually made from like an animal skin, like a goat skin or a sheep skin or something like that. Um, you're probably not buying paper that's made of uh, animal skin, if I'm guessing, but that was the premium paper like back in the day. You think like Dead Sea Scrolls type stuff, you know, that's, um, you know, what it, what it would have been made of. Um, I've got this uh, notebook. This is a Japanese, this is something I got out of J Japan. Um, this is a pilot notebook actually, and you're going to be mad because the paper in here is awesome. And I'm going to show it to you, but um, it says super quality paper for fountain pen. So that is pretty explicit. And that comes from a fountain pen company and the paper is really good. That's the most explicit one that I have, which is why I wanted to show you, even though I don't sell it. Um, Apica is another one, you know, it says premium. So that's pretty good. Choose the paper like you would a good pen. Okay, good instructions, but it doesn't speak anything of the quality itself. Um, Quovatis Habana, another good one. This uses Clairefontaine paper actually, and it says that premium Clairefontaine 90 gram paper. Um, but other than that, it doesn't really say anything about its fountain pen friendliness. Uh, let's see here, what else I got? Gilalo, another really, really good paper. This is one where it's, um, it can trip you up a little bit because it's, uh, it's made to look like kind of the old style hand laid vellum, um, you know, because back in the day, and if, if mine's fallen out of its tablet here, um, but uh, it's got like a watermark and it's got kind of this laid paper look um, back when they actually used to like make it out of like parchment or animal skin and then it would dry it on like a rack and it would get this kind of textured look. Um, so they emulate that here. Um, not as much of a smooth texture, um, but still very ink resistant. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but again, other than saying made in France, which you could assume good, good quality there because they care about their paper uh, in France, uh, doesn't say anything about fountain pen friendliness in particular. Tomoe River, same kind of thing. At least, I mean, it's got Japanese uh, writing on here, which I can't read Japanese, so I don't know exactly what it says. Um, but uh, at least in the English on here, it doesn't say anything about being, uh, premium or anything like that. Uh, another one that I have, Cicero. Um, you know, this comes out out of, uh, where does this come out of? Brazil, I think, I can't remember. Um, but uh, it says 80 gram on this one, page count, doesn't say anything about paper quality. 
And then moleskin, um, I have a couple of different moleskins. This is just a ruled journal, um, you know, page count, sheet count. It says acid-free paper. You know, that's one thing you might see is acid-free or pH neutral. Those are good designations to have. That speaks to the kind of archival quality of the paper. Um, when you have a um, uh, acidity, acidity in your paper, uh, that's like newsprint. Like that's um, um, that's usually something that less expensive paper like newsprint is made to be disposable, right? Um, if you ever have a newspaper that sits around for a few months, it gets yellowed, it dries, it cracks. It doesn't last very long because they use acid to, you know, basically wash and kind of neutralize the, um, um, the pulp that's in the wood in the paper. And uh, um, no, sorry, forgive me. I... I'll try to explain some of the paper process. I don't 100% understand it myself, but um, the, the paper is bleached um, uh, in order to, you know, make it look like white or make it look, you know, the color that they desire. Um, that turns the pH really high. They use acidity to, or acid, <laughs> to um, counteract the bleach. Um, so if you have pH neutral, that means you're not going to have either a highly bleached paper or you're not going to have a um, really acidic paper. So, um, and from what I understand, it's, it's rather difficult to do that process, to have it pH neutral. It's more expensive to do that, so you only get that on higher quality paper. But it means it's going to last longer. It's pH neutral means it's not going to turn yellow and crack and stuff like that. I think I explained that right. I'll be honest, I've had a heck of a day today, so my brain is kind of melted. But anyway, that's what I believe um, the whole process is. Um, so that uh, probably doesn't help you a whole ton, <laughs> um, but I will at least just say that um, probably the best thing for you to do is either to familiarize yourself with the brands, try the product yourself if you can, and really just rely on reviews and information you get from trusted retailers or bloggers or reviewers or whoever that know that the fountain pens uh, will work on that paper. And uh, it's kind of a crapshoot uh, otherwise.